Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another seven o'clock bedtime stories. Let's say some hellos today. Hello, AJ, and hello, Jensen. Hello, Alia, and hello, Joey, too. Hello, Jamie, and hello, Ethan. Hello, Jacob, and hello, April, too. Hello, Holly, and hello, Sophia. Hello, Ava, and hello, everyone. So, last night you got voting, and this is the story you voted for. It was from Mrs Guest's Book Corner, and it's called Katie in London by James Mayhew. And if you look very carefully at this picture of Katie in London, I wonder if you can spot where this story is taking place in London. What is this famous building in the background? Maybe you can pop that into the comments if you think you know. London seemed very big to Katie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> London seemed really big to Katie. Big trains, big buildings and big crowds. She held on to Grandma with one hand and to her little brother Jack with the other. They all got on to a big red bus and set off to see the sights. I wonder how many of you have been to London before. Do you recognise what might be here, where this symbol is here? I wonder if you've seen a double-decker bus like that. But when they got to Trafalgar Square, Grandma was tired. I'll have just a little rest, she said. You two stay by that lion and I'll know where you are. You see the lion? There they are, there's Grandma and the children and lots and lots of pigeons in Trafalgar Square. Katie climbed onto the big bronze lion and pulled Jack up after her. As the sun came out, the lion seemed to turn from grey to gold. Do you mind? said a very deep voice. It was the lion. Who said you could clamber all over me? he asked. We're very sorry, said Katie. Grandma said that we had to stay with you. Ah, oh, then I suppose you must, said the lion. Now what shall we do? We want us to see we wanted to see the sights, but Grandma fell asleep, said Katie. Can you please take us? Oh yes, she said. The lion shook his mane like that. Hold on tight, he roared, and he bounded out of Trafalgar Square. My goodness, how the people stared. But the lion didn't mind. This is much better than lying on that stone all day, he said. You have no idea how to cold my tummy gets. Now, where shall we go? You can choose, said Katie and Jack. Oh, I wonder where they're going to go to. Where do you know in London? Oh, look, this is where they've gone. Do you recognise that building? If you are in year two, or who have been in year two before, you might recognise that, because we did learn about that one. The lion took them to St Paul's Cathedral first. They gazed up at the enormous dome. It makes me feel very small, said Jack. It makes me feel very dizzy, said the lion. But off we go, as there's still so much to see. The next place. Oh, I wonder if you know where that is. If you're in year two, we've learned about that one as well. Next, the lion took Katie and Jack to an old castle. The Tower of London, said the lion. Ghosts and kings and queens haunt this tower. Katie shivered. She held Jack's hand. Don't worry, they only come out at after midnight, said the lion. But you can see the jewels and the crown. There we are. That's inside the Tower of London. That's where the Queen keeps all of her special things. The crown jewels are in a small special room. It was quite a tight squeeze for the lion. The jewels sparkled like stars in the night sky. 
but in all sorts of colours, green emeralds, red rubies and blue sapphires. Oh, wow. There it is again. Tower of London. I love the illustrations in this book. Afterwards, the lion pretended he was a ghost and he chased Katie and Jack. Excuse me, called a man in an old-fashioned costume, but you're scaring my ravens. These are ravens. Who's he? whispered Katie. He's a warder, said the lion. He thinks that the towers will fall down if the ravens leave, and I think it's time to go. So that's a myth, that if the ravens leave the, break, the Tower of London, then the Tower of London will fall down. The lion decided to carry them across the River Thames. They trotted onto Tower Bridge and suddenly an alarm sounded and lights were flashing. The boat was coming and the bridge was opening to let them through. Stop, yelled Katie. But the lion didn't stop. Instead, he jumped. Can you spot him there? Jumping. <laughs> But instead of landing on the other side, they landed on the boat. Oh dear, I don't know if I planned that. They chugged along the river, passing great ships and going under dark bridges. Look, oh my favourite place in London. Look, that's the Globe Theatre, said the lion. Shakespeare wrote some of his plays. Shakespeare wrote some fine plays that are performed there. Although very few of them have lions in them. <laughs> and what's that big wheel over there? Asked Jack. It must be the London Eye, said Katie. Why don't we go on it? Yeah, why don't we go on it? You don't expect me to go on that thing, do you? Said the lion as they all jumped off the boat. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Looking down on this building. I wonder if you know what that building's called. Before the lion could say another word, Katie bustled him on board the London Eye. Slowly the wheel turned and they all rose high above London. The poor lion turned rather pale and started to shake. But soon even he couldn't stop it, help enjoying it enjoying the view. He pointed to Big Ben. Goodness, it's nearly 11 o'clock. What was he pointing to, do you think? Which one is Big Ben? That's it. Here. There it is. Oh. There it is again. As they came down, Big Ben chimed 11 times. Katie and Jack jumped on the lion and they raced across the bridge past the huge clock and to the Houses of Parliament. This is the Houses of Parliament here. In fact, Big Ben is actually not the name of the tower. It's just the name of the bell inside the tower. They hopped in and out of queues and traffic, past taxis and red double-decker buses, past parks and grand buildings. They could hear music and drums. Oh, yes. Back to that page that we saw right on the front cover. This is the building, same building here. It's the changing of the guard, said the lion. Follow me, left, right, left, right. The lion marched off behind the guardsmen in time to the music. Katie and Jack followed all the way to the gates of Buckingham Palace. Who lives in Buckingham Palace, I wonder? Sorry said the policeman. Only royal guards allowed in here. So Katie and Jack jumped upon the lion and he walked on past the palace. They had hoped to see a real prince or a princess. They noticed lots of flags and crests with lions on them. The lion smiled. I'm very well known to the royal family. Why is that? asked Katie. Because the lion is called the king of the beasts, said the lion proudly. 
and as they galloped away, perhaps they did catch a glimpse of someone waving from a palace window. There they are. Oh, we wonder if that's the queen. That's the person that lives there. They are wearing a crown. It could be the queen. By now, the lion's paws were beginning to ache. So they all went to sit in a leafy park. The lion dangled his paws in a cool lake. And Jack bought ice cream with his pocket money. Delicious, said the lion. I love Tutti Fruity. How are your paws? asked Katie. Rather sore, admitted the lion. I'm not used to all this walking. Perhaps we can catch a bus back to Trafalgar Square. There he is, putting his hot paws into the cool water. A policeman told them to catch a number nine bus from Harrods, the big department store. I wish I didn't have to go back, said the lion sadly. Don't you like Trafalgar Square, asked Katie. Of course, said the lion, but I do get such a very cold tummy lying on the stone all the time. Jack whispered in Katie's ear and they both smiled. They went inside Harrods and they came out a few seconds later with a very small parcel. What do you think the parcel might be? Then they jumped onto the bus and they travelled back to Trafalgar Square. This is for you, said Jack, holding a parcel from Harrods to the lion. We bought it with the last of our pocket money. The lion unwrapped it and laughed. It was a woolly blanket. Oh, it's going to keep his tummy nice and warm, isn't it? I've got to say, though, buying a woolly blanket from Harrods might cost more than the leftovers of pocket money. It's to keep your tummy warm, said Katie. How kind you are, sighed the lion. Thanks for showing us round London, said Jack. Next time, I will show you even more, said the lion. Then Katie saw Grandma was waking up and she hop so he hopped onto his stone and he kept, oh, the lion hopped onto his stone and he kept very still. And as the sun went in, he turned from gold back to grey. Hello, you two, said Grandma. Shall we go off and see the sights now? Oh, said Katie. Well, I'm a little bit tired. I need a rest, said Jack. And they both flopped down on the bench and they fell asleep. <laughs> I wonder if Granny's going to go on an adventure now. <laughs> I wonder if the lion will turn back gold again for her. Oh, what a lovely book. Now, this one it reminds me a little bit of home because that's where I'm from, London, the south of London. I don't live near Buckingham, didn't live near Buckingham Palace or anything like that. But um, yeah, it makes, me, it makes me think about home when I read that one. So good choice. Right, tomorrow night, you've got a choice of another two books and they are Tr The Troll by Julia Donaldson. And this one has been kindly lent to us by Isaac. So thank you for that one, Isaac. And this one from Isaac, which is called The Jungle Run. So there are your two choices. Get voting and hopefully I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye.